recently I saw on my timeline that the one and only Peggy Goo has a new track out with none other than Lenny Kravitz. Yes, you heard that right. Lenny Kravitz and Peggy Goo linked up for a collab and it sounds as bad as you think it would sound. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of surprised that it sounded worse than I actually imagined. More so because of Lenny Kravitz, actually, not because of Peggy Goo. Um, Lenny Kravitz does this weird voice inflection thing because at the beginning, I was thinking to myself, wow, Peggy Goo's voice is horrible. When the opening verse starts of the record, you think, Jesus Christ, she cannot sing to save her life. Then I was listening closer. I was like, hold on, that's not Peggy Goo. That's Lenny Kravitz singing. And then once you like dig deeper and go into Genius and you check the fucking lyrics, you see verse one is actually Lenny Kravitz. So that's actually him croning when he said, you control my fire, baby, you have got it all. That's actually Lenny Kravitz croning. And he does this weird voice inflection. Like in, in all these other singles, he sings in a particular tone that you know Lenny Kravitz for, right? If you know Lenny Kravitz songs, you know what he sounds like. I don't know why for this particular record, he put on a particular voice inflection. Now, I'm saying this aloud and I'm not really too sure if maybe his regular records are done a certain way. Maybe he auto-tunes them so they sound a certain way and maybe on this record he preferred not to. I'm not too sure what it is, but either way, his voice sounds horrendous. Um, I don't know why the song exists. It's kind of like this weird disco bop poppy thing going on there i'm not really just sure where the pocket kind of falls in there and i'm also not really confused i'm really confused why this is the second single after um na 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 that it or was it go it goes right because I, I honestly hated that record but it clearly did numbers it was you know high in the charts for a bit it was getting played all over the shop like obviously peggy was pushing it hard that's one thing she has to you have to give her credit for like she does that thing that tyler the creator speaks about where he says like a lot of creatives don't really um, put time into promoting their artwork or promoting their work in general a lot of creative people myself included will do the work put it out and never speak about it again but he basically mentions that you should keep pushing your work continuously like you should never stop promoing yourself um because if you don't do it no one else is going to do it and peggy does a really good job of that even when she had the other song um you know um starry starry night and shit like she absolutely pushed that record until the wheels fell off you know and i mean and she always performed it with a smile on her face like it was a first time like the consumer professional one thing you cannot take away from this girl when she gets behind the booth she might be again Peggy might be a pain behind the scenes. She might be a B-I-T-C-H. She might be demanding. She might be annoying. She might be a fucking terrible time to party with, whatever this vibe is. But when she gets behind the booth, when it's business time, she fucking turns that face on. She gets going. She dances. She smiles at the fucking crowd, blows kisses. Like she is a professional. So I do like the fact that she pushes her record. She came to London. She did that weird like gorilla marketing thing that felt very performative. I'm not going to lie. Where she, it felt like pain a couple people who dance at fucking gay or some inferno folk to go and pop down with her Tottenham Court Road and start voguing in the middle of the park it was very strange very odd but again it was a real event that she did she connected with the fans she touched and felt them took some pictures and then went to perform the thing in the club so clearly this woman knows how to push a record she can push a record really well but considering the success of it goes and again i didn't like the track but it went it went it definitely went in the charts this is an odd song to kind of follow up with i don't really know why the Lenny Kravitz could link up doesn't make any sense personally for me um she could have probably put this out on her own without Lenny Kravitz and it would have done maybe the same i don't really think he's gonna really take her anywhere musically or even in terms of popularity and stuff um you know whatever and yeah it's just a weird link up and even the picture the album cover single artwork thing is just odd it's like it's giving like um it's giving father and daughter it's giving like what i don't know it's giving you know you see these couples in fucking dober street market in it right where you're not really too sure who's the one with the fucking wallet or who's the one wearing the trousers you have no idea but it's just a strange car cover in general what it features lenny kravitz holding the hands of Len, um uh, peggy goo or i might say lenny goo as they fucking walk down the street somewhere it's a very strange one now maybe this is a collaboration that's going to be the first thing that we see for a long line of collaborations between the both of them but i don't really know what's going on there or maybe they're dating who knows maybe they're actually fucking behind the scenes and this is why they're linking up but either way it's fucking garbage um really really terrible maybe her worst song in her discography i have to be honest especially after i checked the actual what, where's the actual discography i think i've got it over here right now there it is if you actually check her discography this legitimately might be the worst song that she's ever put out um let's start from 
um, it makes you forget, right? That's probably the one that everyone kind of knew her about, right? Um, Itange, um, you got Hanjan, you got Traveling um, Without Arriving, Starry Night, and then you've got Nabi. Wow, wow Starry Night got silver. Damn, son. Dem, dem, dem. Um, Nabi, you got I go, and it goes, it goes like na na na. And legitimately, this might be the worst one. Hundred percent that I believe in love again might be the le worst record I've actually heard from Peggy. And usually, she's really good at putting out decent singles. Again, maybe not the most amazing, you know, um, out there flipping artists in terms of creativity and shit. But when it comes to singles, she knows what she's doing. But this record just feels like a pointless waste of time. Really, even the lyrics, like the verse. Um, the opening verse by Lenny Kravitz you control my fire baby you have it got it all you got my body and my spirit winter spring summer or fall you got me rivering for to the rhythm even when I'm feeling small oh yeah you got me rocking to my rhythm and you got me feeling tall the chorus I believe in love again I believe in love again oh 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 Hey, who comes in tonight? You know that you're going to find what you're looking for you and I to fill your dance floor baby please come on I wonder what it is about DJing because this happened to like Nina, Nina Kravitz too I wonder what it is about DJing especially for the women in the industry at a certain level of fame and celebrity and stardom they it seems that they all get bored of it I wonder why maybe it's just maybe it is actually boring to stand behind the booth it doesn't matter how much you're getting paid at a certain level pressing Q and play and mixing a couple of tunes in it might just get a little bit boring you're like you know what I need to challenge myself I need to feel alive again I need to believe in love again <laughs> so I'm gonna go out there and try something which I think is infinitely harder personally I think it's infinitely harder to make it as a musician than it is to make it as a fucking a musician such artist as make it as a DJ I think most people would probably agree with that um or it just probably requires more effort work um you know to kind of get through that kind of lane as opposed to just standing behind the booth and playing other people's music um it's because you basically have to create music from your own from scratch and it has to be good you know there's a lot of fucking um pressure on in that respect when it, whereas if you're djing you can select from the best songs ever released put them out and most likely you know put them together so in a mix and most likely most people will probably like what you play because it's the best music ever released right ever ever ever, ever. so i get that vibe but sometimes i also think there needs to be an appreciation on understanding why you're a DJ. Like why I play music is because I'm a basically a raver at heart. I enjoy going to parties. I enjoy fucking going crazy. I enjoy dancing and sweating my face off and just that whole ambiance behind it. So after a certain point in raving, you either become somebody that just becomes a full-time raver or you become a promoter or you become a DJ, right? Or maybe you go and work in a bar or you kind of have your own club. But usually there's a point where you're like, you know what, I need more. And then you decide to kind of get involved on the other side of things. That's why basically I got involved in it. Of course, you discover a love for the music and digging and shit and all that malarkey and obviously improving your skills and putting that mixes to like 12 people, but you don't care because you love it so much. By the way, check out my SoundCloud link, link, link in the fucking description. But I think there should be an understanding if you're a DJ of your limitations and why you got into it you should be able to understand that hey i'm a dj because most likely i can't sing or i can't rap or whatever it is or i can't perform or i'm not a good dancer or whatever it may be you need to understand that and just be okay with that and kind of sit in your pocket no i won't say stay in your lane but sit in the pocket that you are best at because i still think as a producer if she, you know, whether or not she's producing them or not, I still think she's got a good ear and an understanding of how to pick beats and how to arrange things. Because I can understand a scenario where most likely she may have a ghost producer, but they work in conjunction with together. And I don't think that's anything wrong with that. Maybe she makes them all from herself from scratch. Cool. But if not, I'm still believing she has a good brain because I think Peggy's like underrated when it comes to the whole business acumen side of things, right? And understanding how to move as an artist. So I'm pretty sure she has a very good A&R brain to pick up certain beats, to know what works where to how to arrange things like an actual producer producer in the kind of conventional sense right um and obviously put the records out and market them and just push them in the way that she pushes them unapologetically getting to work always smiling in the face like she's not doing a trippy red she's not fucking cancelling tours or anything do you know what I mean she rarely even cancels shows like always there always prepared always gonna play um always got the game face on but there should be an understanding that that's what you do the best that's what you're fucking world class at that's why you get the big bucks but then when you go into the artist thing, it's a bit, mm. but then I say that and I think to myself, look at Avalon Emerson. Avalon Emerson's got this band that she's put out, right? And before she put that band out, I wasn't really sold on Avalon Emerson as a DJ. I'm not really the biggest fan, but the music, the album, 
let's let's not lie that album is fucking good <laughs> you know and i have to give her credit so sometimes taking chances can be very risky because i guess you could fail right and you could fail terribly and everyone can see it in public but then i guess in some respects it also is a little bit of a there's no risk involved really in it because you'd imagine most of the fans that like Peggy Goo for her DJing and her producing in the dance music sense will probably not care if she flops in her pursuit to have a solo artist career because that's what it looks like she's angling towards. The way the music video for it goes, um, sorry, what's that record called? Um, uh, no, 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 no. Um, it goes like, right? The music record for it, um, how it, for the music record for it goes like, the rollout for it, Obviously, the le- link up with Lenny Kravitz, it feels like she's angling herself to be more of a artiste in that regard, right? But I guess in her defense, there it's a, basically a riskless pursuit because your fans that like you for DJing and producing aren't going to fall out of love with you because you put out a couple of dud records or shit or even a dud album. They're still going to be there. And the fans that you're trying to chase being a solo artist are going to be there when the songs are good. And when they're not good, it won't matter because you've got your DJ fans to kind of fall back on. Because if she decided to go next year and start doing fucking 400 dates or some shit, right? There's many agents, many promoters, many venues that will take her up in a heartbeat. She's not short of gigs. That's no problem about money or about getting out on the circuit again. She's still super young. So she's got a long career ahead of her. So all that stuff is is in there. So maybe this is a bit of a free shot. Fuck it. Let's try something new. Let's go down this route. Um, which might explain why this is happening the way it's happening. And then, of course, I think about the Avalon Emerson album. Um, what's it called? I've got it here on my phone. Um, Avalon Emerson and The Charm. Is that what it's called? No, Avalon Emerson and the album's called The Charm. And The Charm, sorry. And it's fucking good. I was really doubtful about whether it would be great, but the album is really good. Um, nine tracks, under 40 minutes, superb little alternative... I don't know what you call it. Is it alternative? I think you, I guess you'd call it indie or something along those kind of lines, but it's a really good album. So maybe Peggy saw that or maybe was planning before that to do that and now she's trying to go in that lane. Personally, for me, I think, you know, again, the the the, the, the singles for me haven't been the greatest. It goes like, whatever, I could do without it, but it's obviously been super popular as you can see by the fucking certification. Look at that. It's a gold. It's um, it's British gold. Um, It's also got another gold. What's it? What's, what's FEMA? Oh, it's got it's it's gold in England. It's gold in Italy. It's also gold in Greece. Jesus Christ! What's the chart position here in the U.S. dance charts? It got to number five. Um, in England, where did it get to? U.K. It got to number five too. Jesus Christos, bro! That's a really good result. So big up her. So I guess maybe I'm the one that's maybe not in the loop and doesn't really plugged in. But personally for me, I didn't like the record. Thought it was a bit terrible. And if anything, um, it's another reminder of just how difficult it is to be an actual artist outside of playing music of other people. It's not that easy. 